stand strong. Thank you, Vice President Pence. We want to improve the relationship, but we're going to level the playing field, and we're going to hold Vice China accountable for what they did to America with the coronavirus. Thank you. Senator Harris, let me ask you the same question that I asked the Vice President. How would you describe our fundamental relationship with China? Are we competitors, adversaries, enemies? You'll have two minutes uninterrupted. Susan, the Trump administration's perspective and approach to China has resulted in the loss of American lives, American jobs, and America's standing. There is a weird obsession that President Trump has had with getting rid of whatever accomplishment was achieved by President Obama and Vice President Biden. For example, they created within the White House an office that basically was responsible for monitoring pandemics. They got away, they, they got rid of it. Not true. There was a team of disease experts that President Obama and Vice President Biden dispatched to China to monitor what is now predictable and what might happen. They pulled them out. We now are looking at 210,000 Americans who have lost their lives. Let's look at the job situation. We mentioned before the trade deal, the trade war, they wanted to call it, with China. It resulted in the loss of over 300 manufacturing jobs and a manufacturing recession and the American consumer paying thousands of dollars more for goods because of that failed war that they called it. Then let's talk about standing. Pew, a reputable research firm, has done an analysis that shows that leaders of all of our formerly allied countries have now decided that they hold in greater esteem and respect Xi Jinping, the head of the Chinese Communist Party, than they do Donald Trump, the president of the United States, the commander in chief of the United States. This is where we are today because of a failure of leadership by this administration. Senator Harris, we've seen changes in the, in the role of the United States in terms of global leadership over the past four years. And of course, times do change. What's your definition? We've seen strains with China, of course, as the vice president mentioned. We've seen strains with our traditional allies yeah. in NATO and elsewhere. What is your definition of the role of American leadership in 2020? So, you know, Joe is, I, I love talking with Joe about a lot of these issues. And, you know, Joe, he, I think he said it quite well. He says, you know, foreign policy, it might sound complicated, but really it's relationships. So just think about it as relationships. And so we know this in our personal and professional relationships. Um, you got to keep your word to your friends. Got to be loyal to your friends. People who have stood with you, you got to stand with them. You got to know who your adversaries are and keep them in check. But what we have seen with Donald Trump is that he has betrayed our friends and, 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 and embraced dictators around the world. Let's take, for example, Russia. So, Russia, I serve on the Intelligence Committee of the United States Senate. America's intelligence community told us Russia interfered in the election of the president of the United States in 2016 and is playing in 2020. Christopher Wray, the director of the FBI, said the same. But Donald Trump, the commander in chief of the United States of America, prefers to take the word of Vladimir Putin over the word of the American intelligence community. You look at our friends at NATO. He has walked away from agreements. You can talk, look at the Iran nuclear deal, which now has put us in a position where we are less safe because they are building up what might end up being a significant nuclear arsenal. We were in that deal, guys. We were in the Iran nuclear deal with friends, with allies around the country. And because of Donald Trump's unilateral approach to foreign policy, coupled with his isolationism, he pulled us out and has made America less safe. So, Susan, it's about relationships. And the thing that has always been part of the strength of our nation, in addition to our great military, has been that we keep our word. But Donald Trump doesn't understand that because he doesn't understand what it means to be honest. Thank you. Thank